Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to create this procedural cracked earth effect using nodes and displacement. This is completely procedural and there's a lot of customization that you can do. You can change the thickness, the height, all of that I'll be covering in this video. So to get started I'm first going to delete the default cube and then press shift A and then add in a plane. We're going to scale this plane up just a little bit and also apply the scale. So press Ctrl A, apply the scale. Then let's go into edit mode and subdivide this. I'm going to right click and subdivide and underneath the subdivide panel, I'm going to set the number of cuts to 100. Next up, we're going to go over to the modifier tab and add in a displacement modifier to make sure that it's not completely flat. Select a new on that texture and then go over to the texture panel and switch the type from image or movie over to clouds. The size of the bumps are a little bit too small, so I'm going to drag this up till we get the size that we want. Probably around there is pretty good. Then over in the displacement modifier, I'm going to set the strength down to 0.1. Next up, we're going to go over to the world settings and add in an HDR so we get some lighting in our scene. I'm going to click on the color, select the environment texture and open up a new HDR. If you want to use the same HDR that I'm using, there is a link in the description. I'm going to be using the dry field HDR and then open image. I'm going to set the strength to two. Then over in the render tab, I'm going to go underneath the film tab and turn on transparency so we don't see it in the background. We're going to be using the experimental feature set so we can actually add in some displacement in the subdivision surface modifier. The device I'll be using the GPU. Then over in the modifier tab, once again, we're going to click add modifier and select subdivision surface. Switch the mode over to simple and then adaptive subdivision, make sure that is turned on. Again, if you don't see this adaptive subdivision, make sure that the feature set is set to experimental. The dicing scale in the subdivision allows you to change how much resolution there is. This also depends on the view of the camera. If you're really zoomed in into the plane, there's going to be a lot more geometry. If you're zoomed out, you're not going to need that much, so it's going to bring it down. For my final render, I found a value of about 2 works pretty good, so that's what we're going to set there. Now that we've created our scene, we are ready to start working on the material. With the node editor open, I'm going to click new and create a new material. Make sure you have the node wrangler add-on enabled in your preferences. Underneath the add-ons, make sure you have the node wrangler add-on right here checked, and it will make this tutorial a lot easier to follow. The first node that I'm going to add is a texture coordinate node. Underneath the input tab, I'm going to select texture coordinates. This will allow us to determine where on our plane the line is going to be, and we're going to be using the generated output. You can also use the UV if you wanted to. Next up, I'm going to press Shift A and go underneath Converter, and then add in a separate XYZ. If we take the generated, plug that into the vector, and then if we Control Shift, left click on this, and then make sure you go into Rendered View on the right side, on the left side, I mean, you should be able to see this effect. The left side starts out black and then it becomes white as it goes across. The same thing is with the Y and the Z. If we go over to the Y, if we control shift left click one more time, it'll go down. So now with the Y, it's starting down here and going up like this. Same thing for the Z, but since this is a plane, it's not going to display it. If it had some thickness, we would be able to see it. We're going to be using the X to create the line. And how this is going to work is we're also going to add in a color and then a RGB curves and we'll place it here. This will allow us to customize how the line looks on our plane. I got this set up from a default cube tutorial and it is a pretty good one so I'll leave a link in the description as well. What we have to do is add in a converter and then a math node. We're going to be taking the color output of the RGB curves, placing that into the top input. Then we're going to take the Y, plug that into the bottom input and then set the mode over to subtract. Now what happens if we control shift left click on this, this is what we're getting. You can see it's now following the RGB curves. So if we were to drag this up, you can see it's going to change it over on the right on the left side as well. So we can drag this down, we can move this up and customize it however you want. All right, I think this looks pretty good. I want it to go up and then come over the top and down on this side and I think I like how that looks. Now to actually get this into a line, what we need to do is add in an absolute node. This will take all of the negative values and turn them positive. So with the subtract node, I'm going to press shift D and place it on the right side. I'm going to switch the mode over to absolute. And once we do this, here is the effect that we're getting. Now we have white values on the top and the bottom, and it's creating a line in the middle. 
To actually change the thickness of this, we can add in another math node. I'm going to shift D this and place it on the right again and switch this over to the greater than mode. Now this threshold value controls the thickness of our curve. So if we were to drag this down, if we go 0.1, it's going to be a lot smaller. I'm going to go with a value of 0.015. This is looking pretty good so far, but you might notice that our line is very smooth. There is no randomness to it. It just looks completely smooth. So to fix that, we're going to be adding in a noise texture to add some randomness to our line. I'm going to press Shift A, go underneath the texture and add in a noise texture. To combine this, we're going to press Shift A and add in a color, Mix RGB, we'll place it right here. Then take the factor, plug that into the bottom input of the mix node. Now this factor value controls how much noise there is in the scene. One problem that we have though is if we drag this up, you will notice that the line is moving up as well. This makes it a little bit annoying because you can't really see what you're doing. So to fix this, switch this over to Linear Light. This will make sure that the line stays in the middle even if you drag the factor up. And there we go, we now have some randomness in our line. The factor value I'm going to bring down to 0.2. Now over in the noise texture, we're going to be changing a couple of values here. First off, I'm going to set the mode over to 4D. This will give us a W slider and this is the pattern of the noise. So if you want a different pattern, you can bring this up. For now, I'm going to set the detail up to 16 and the roughness I'm going to bring up just slightly as well. Let's go with 0.55. If we zoom in now, you will see we have a lot more detail in our curve. You can also bring up the distortion if you want to. Maybe just a value of 0.1 will be pretty good. And there is a problem and we have this random spot on the top right here. And to fix that, all we have to do is drag the W value up and this will give us another random noise pattern for the noise. So what I'll do is I'll just hold shift and I'll drag this up until we get a pattern that I like. All right, there we go. I think a value of 5.9 looks pretty good. We can see here that there is no random spots along the edges and I'm liking how this noise looks. To actually plug this into the material output, we need to add in a vector and a displacement node. We'll take the value of the greater than, plug that into the height, and then for the displacement, just take this and plug it into the displacement. If we control shift left click on the principled shader over in the displacement node, if we were to drag the scale up, you won't see any difference. That's because we need to go over to the material tab underneath the settings. Make sure that the displacement is set to displacement and bump down here. Now what it will do is it will change it like this. You might notice that everything has moved up and that is because of the mid level. If we bring this up to a value of one, that will make sure that the plane stays in its exact position, but only displaces the bottom part right here. And there we go. We've now created a procedural crack in our plane and the scale value right here now controls the depth of our displacement. If you want it smaller, just drag it smaller like this. If we set it to one, it becomes a lot uh, smaller. I think a value of about five or six is probably good. Like there, I'm liking how that looks. Now before we continue with this tutorial, here is a quick word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of inspiring classes taught by professionals. Any subject that you can think of, Skillshare will probably have a class on it. Some of the topics include animation, film, graphic design, photography, and Blender, just to name a few. I edit my tutorials using Premiere Pro and sometimes it takes forever to finish a video. I wanted to speed up my workflow so I took this class by Jordi Van... Van Poot, Van... I took this class on advanced video editing in Premiere Pro. Now I'm able to edit so much faster and I learned quite a bit that I did not know before. With an extremely affordable price of less than $10 a month, you get unlimited access to every single class on their platform. And yes, I did say that correctly, the annual subscription is less than $10 a month. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of the premium membership on Skillshare. So what are you waiting for? Go click the link in the description and start learning something new today. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and now back to the tutorial. This is coming along pretty good, but we can add in a lot more detail to our displacement. On the top right here, you can see it's completely flat. So the next thing that we're going to add is some bump to the top of the plane. To do this, we're going to press Shift D on this greater than, move it down here and switch this over to the multiply node. Also, just to make sure everything runs a little bit faster, I'm going to uncheck this from the material output, then control shift left click on the multiply node. We're going to take the absolute, plug that into the top input, 
Now the value right here controls the thickness of the outside of the, of the line. If we bring this up to a value of around eight or so, we can see here, this is looking pretty good. So we're gonna be taking these values on the outside and using that for the displacement. I also wanna make sure I'm not changing the middle line. We can do this very easily by subtracting this greater than to this multiply node. I'll shift D this, move it down here and switch it over to the subtract mode. We'll take the greater than, plug that into the top and the multiply into the value right here. Control shift left click on this and this is the effect that we're getting. This multiply node now controls the thickness of the outside of the line. If we were to drag this lower, it's going to extend a lot further. I'm gonna set this to a value of 8.6. To actually combine this with our displacement, we need to press Shift D on this and drag it underneath. We're gonna take the value, plug that into the height of the displacement. Now if we take this, plug that into right here, we'll Control Shift left click on this. We can see it's doing something crazy. Now the reason this is happening is because the mid-level is set to one, we need to set that down to zero, and the scale is way too crazy. Let's set this a lot lower, like a value of 0 0.045. You also might notice on our plane, we now have this really weird curve on it. And the reason this is happening is because of the multiply node. It's changing the values on the edges of our plane to a value bigger than one. So what we need to do is clamp those values and that will make sure that the plane stays completely flat. What we can see here now is with this scale value, if we were to drag this up higher, it's going to extend those values up as you can see. Now we have a lot of detail on the side here and it's going all the way across. Let's go a little bit lower though. I think that's a bit too much. Probably a value of 0.1 is good. Then to actually combine both of these displacements, we're gonna press Shift A and add in a converter and then a vector math node and we'll place it here. We're going to be setting this into the bottom input. The top displacement is going to go into the top. And once we do this, now we have both of the displacements working at the exact same time. The next thing that we're going to do is add some color to our displacement right here. We're going to have two different colors, one for the top of the plane and one for underneath right here. To do this, it's very easy. All we're going to do is select the separate X, Y, Z node, shift it and move it upwards. We're going to be taking the object coordinates from the texture coordinate, plugging that into the vector, and then we're going to be using the Z location to change the color. If we control shift left click on this three times, we'll be able to see what this looks like. You can already see that there is some white on the top. And so all we have to do now is minus this value. So it actually comes down a little bit. I'm going to press shift a and add in a converter and then another math node. We'll place it right here. Then we're gonna switch the mode from add over to less than. This threshold value now controls where it is located on our plane. So I think if we were to drag this to a negative value, we can see there, yep, it's underneath. Let's go with negative 0.1 right here and enter. Once we do this, we can see it's right there, which is good. And I'm happy with that result. Now, all we have to do is use this as a mask. I'm gonna press shift A, add in a color, mix RGB, we'll place it here. And then you probably already guessed it. We're gonna be taking the value, plugging that into the top input of the factor, control shift left click on the mix node. Now we have two sets of colors. This top color controls the top of the plane. So if I set this over to like a green, for example, we can see it looks like this. Then the bottom color, of course, controls the one underneath. So for this color, I'm gonna be setting it to a very dark brown color. Then if we control shift left click on the principal shader, we'll plug this into the base color we're gonna get this sort of an effect. And there we go. So what I'm gonna do now is just add in a texture to this top input and it's gonna be a grass texture. And there we go, we now have this cool cracked earth effect. Now the last thing that I will show you in this video is how to bleed some of the color underneath onto the top of the plane. And this is very easy. All we're gonna do is take the subtract node and then add that to the mask that we created earlier. So I will select the less than, I'll press shift D and move it over to the right side and switch this over to the add function. Then we will take the subtract node over here next to the greater than and multiply. We'll take the subtract, plug that into the bottom input of the add. And once we do that, we can see some of that brown color coming into the grass and it looks pretty cool. If you want a little bit more control over this, we can add in another math node. We'll take the value here, plug that into the top input, plug this into the add, and switch this one over to the multiply function. 
Now the value of the multiply controls how much of this color is displayed on the grass. So if I was to drag this up to let's say four for example, we can see a lot of color is now bleeding through. I think a value of about one will look pretty good so it's just a little bit like that. And there we go, here is the complete node setup if you want to take a look at it and make sure that you didn't miss anything because I know node tutorials are a little bit complicated at times. So feel free to pause the video and take a look at it. But now I'm going to go through this one more time and show you all of the values and how you can change it to your liking. This linear light over here controls how much noise is in the line. As you can see if I drag it higher, a lot more comes in. The RGB curves allow you to change the line and how it looks. I can drag this up this way and we get a nice curve. The greater than node next to the absolute controls how much thickness the line has. Higher values will make it a lot thicker as you can see. The multiply node controls the buildup along the edges of the line. Lower values will result in a lot more buildup as you can see if I drag this lower. The bottom displacement controls the buildup along the edges. The higher you set the scale, the higher it will go up. With a value of 1, you can see it's a lot higher. The scale value in the displacement controls how deep the crack is. If I set this a lower, the line will be a lot smaller as you can see. And there you go, that is how you create a procedural cracked earth effect using nodes. Thank you very much for watching. If you learned something new and created something cool yourself, I would love to see it, so make sure to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. If you enjoyed, consider leaving a like and subscribe for more tutorials in the future. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.